you're a baseball fan, you know that the new age Los Angeles Dodgers have a pretty fat wallet, and they're not afraid to spend what's inside of it. In the early days of their lucrative spending habits, they set their sights on an international superstar who was posted for the first time. Hailing from the KBO was Hyun Jin Ryu, who boasted an impressively well-rounded five-pitch arsenal and a career 280 ERA over eight seasons with the Hanhua Eagles. Ryu was a target for many teams, but the Dodgers made themselves known as a new threat by buying him out for $36 million. A 1.15 whip and over a thousand strikeouts over eight seasons is nothing to scoff at. Ryu was immediately anointed as a big part of their rotation going into the 2013 season, and as a rookie, he did not disappoint. Ryu was pretty successful in his Major League debut. He went six and two-thirds innings against the division rival Giants and got the win. Fans were reasonably excited. The Dodgers rotation was still fronted by the likes of Clayton Kershaw, but now the Dodgers had two of the best southpaws in the game. Ryu turned a lot of heads. He posted a 3 ERA and a 1.20 whip and placed top three in the Rookie of the Year voting that year. As a result, the Dodgers returned to the playoffs for the first time in four years. But in his first taste of MLB playoff action, Ryu did not pitch well against the Atlanta Braves. The Dodgers were eliminated in the NLCS against the Cardinals. LA fans kept their hopes high, and while Ryu pitched well in his first two seasons, he unfortunately became the victim of a series of injuries. After a serious dip in his velocity in 2015, Ryu underwent season-ending shoulder surgery in May, ruling him out for the 2015 season. The Dodgers had lost many pieces of their rotation and were promptly eliminated by the Mets in the NLDS. This might have sparked interest in bringing in some more starting pitching depth, and what better place to look at than overseas yet again? This time, Los Angeles took a closer look at the Nippon professional organization to their current king of the mound, Kenta Maeda. Maeda was coming off a season with an undefeated record and a 2.09 ERA. He was top 5 in the MPB in all major pitching categories, and was a target of many major league teams after being posted for the first time. When Ryu was a free agent, not many teams expected the Dodgers to land him, but with their spending habits known, it was all but certain that Kenta Maeda was going to be a Los Angeles Dodger. He'd be bringing these impressive stats over seven seasons with him. The Dodgers' rotation was once again headed in the right direction with the addition of Maeda, and they were still holding out hope that Ryu could return for the 2016 season to have both their overseas aces in the same rotation. After all, the Dodgers had a lot of money invested in both of these guys. Having them both effective and healthy at the same time was a must if they were going to get back to the World Series. Maeda's debut did not disappoint. In fact, it's one of the most memorable debuts of any player in the past decade. He tossed six shutout innings against the Padres and was able to get a win in his first major league start. Oh, and he also cranked a solo shot in the hardest ballpark to hit a home run in. Pretty sick. People had noticed that Maeda and Ryu ended up having very similar pitch arsenals. A fastball, a slider, a curve, a sinker, and a change, both relying on their four-seamer more than any other pitch. In fact, they both didn't add a cut fastball to their arsenal until the same year in 2017. But in the midst of Maeda's rookie campaign, Hyunjin Ryu attempted his first comeback. He joined LA for one start in July, but got battered around by the Padres and promptly returned to the DL. He got surgery on his left elbow in September and was once again out for the year. Ryu had pitched just one game in both 2015 and 2016. But the Dodgers had another starter with the same arsenal, so Maeda was going to get relied on a lot more, and he didn't disappoint either. Maeda enjoyed a breakout rookie season, assuming Ryu's spot in the rotation. He posted a 3.48 ERA and a 1.14 whip as the second starter on the depth chart behind Clayton Kershaw, much like Ryu was. He finished top three in the Rookie of the Year voting, just like Ryu in his first season. However, similar to Ryu, Maeda would struggle in his first MLB playoff start, and he posted a 6.75 ERA over his cumulative playoff performances. The Dodgers would miss the World Series again. But for 2017, it looked like the Dodgers would finally get Hyunjin Ryu back and healthy. Despite incessant comparison, Hyunjin Ryu and Kenta Maeda both pitched well in 2017, and the Dodgers finally made it back to the World Series. Their opponent was the Houston Astros. In LA's first World Series appearance since 1988, their overseas superstar struggled, and the team battled, but never really stood a chance, for some reason. They fought tooth and nail to get to a Game 7, but the Astros were crowned World Series champions, despite the now obvious notion that they were cheating the whole time. Ouch. 
They'd rebound in 2018, but once again fall, this time to the Boston Red Sox, despite having Ryu and Maeda both healthy again. Double ouch. Many questions circulated the Dodgers heading into 2020 after two World Series losses and a disappointing 2019 exit in the NLDS. One of their biggest unanswered questions was what to do with free agent Hyunjin Ryu, and we got a shocking answer to this when Hyunjin Ryu signed a four-year $80 million contract with the rebuilding team in the Toronto Blue Jays. With this, the Dodgers rotation was a bit weaker and Kenta Maeda, who was subjected to the bullpen in the 2019 season, looked to be taking back Ryu's spot in the rotation. But in their offseason overhaul, a shocking trade was made between the Dodgers and Twins that sent Kenta Maeda to Minnesota in exchange for a young phenom named Brewstar Gratterall. A year after losing his rotation spot, Kenta Maeda was being looked upon as the ace of the Twins pitching staff. Maeda put up pretty average numbers in 2019, and he was going to need to find a way to combat the lowering velocity of his fastball. Like many great pitchers, Maeda's bread and butter was his four-seam fastball. This happened in 2018 and 2019. But to re-emerge as an ace, Maeda made some changes. Maeda began relying on his slider far more than any other pitch, but this didn't happen to be his most effective pitch. That would be his changeup. The disparity in velocity between Maeda's changeup and fastball is 7 miles per hour, and because he had to rely on his four-seamer less by doing this, his batting average against for his four-seamer was the lowest of any pitch in his career over a season, at .086. That was good for top three in the AL, but he also led in weighted on-base average against this fastball at .104 and hard hit percentage at 10.5. Maeda's arsenal reinvention wasn't only benefiting his fastball though. A heavy reliance on his changeup made his changeup all the more effective too. Kenta Maeda's changeup dominated the American League in batting average, slugging percentage, weighted on base average, whiff percentage, and strikeout percentage. Maeda was truly becoming a dual threat on the mound, and he needed to be if the Twins were gonna make a playoff push. Meanwhile, something eerily similar was going on in the AL East Division in Toronto. Or, I, I guess, in Buffalo. Hyunjin Ryu's first two starts as a Toronto Blue Jay went pretty badly. Combined, he pitched nine innings, allowing eight earned runs on 13 hits and four walks. Something had to change. Throughout Ryu's career, the two most used pitches out of his arsenal were always his changeup and his fastball. But with his velocity declining in 2020, he needed to figure out something else. This is where his cutter comes into play. As I mentioned before, Ryu developed his cutter pretty late in his career in 2017, but 2020 was the year where he used it the most. This is where the turnaround in his 2020 season really began to take form. His cutter became the pitch he relied on to get big outs, and that shows in his placings for weighted on base average, whiff percentage, and strikeout percentage, which he led the American League in. The best part about Ryu and Maeda's arsenal changes is that we can pinpoint exactly when they happen based on their stats in August, because these guys ran and August. Ryu allowed just three earned runs in the entire month of August, and Kenta Maeda was allowing basically no base runners with a .72 whip. They placed top 10 in these major categories. Maeda and Ryu were really proving to baseball fans that they were worth the assets sacrificed to get them. They were true aces of both of these teams, and it showed by both of these teams making serious pushes for the playoffs come September. Those said teams would turn to them for big starts in September games. With just a week left in the season and the Twins down a game in the Central, Maeda was matched up with the eventual AL Cy Young, Shane Bieber. The task was certainly tall, but this is just the kind of thing you call on your ace for, and Maeda certainly delivered. Maeda shut out the Indians over seven innings while striking out seven batters and got the win. This win would prove crucial, helping the Twins to control the AL Central a week later. Maeda's 2020 season was certainly on track to be his best full season. He led the American League in whip and was top three in walks per nine and opponents average. Not to mention the fact that all 11 of Maeda's starts in the 2020 season were quality starts. While the Twins sat comfortably with the division lead, the Blue Jays were fighting tooth and nail to get the last spot in the AL playoff picture. With the young team's back against the wall, they turned to their ace, Hyunjin Ryu, for a big start. On his last start of the season, Hyunjin Ryu shut out the Yankees over seven innings, just like Maeda did, striking out four and getting the win for Toronto when they really needed one. And with this, Ryu helped another team snap their four-year playoff drought like he did with the Dodgers. This concluded what was a pretty impressive season fronting the Blue Jays' rotation for Hyunjin Ryu. He placed top five in ERA and racked up a 3.0 war along the way. Despite Minnesota and Toronto having the second and seventh best records, they were awarded the third and eighth seeds in the playoffs. Because, um, yeah.
Sure. Maeda took the hill for Game 1 against the Houston Astros, the same team that burned him in his first World Series. These are the same twins that haven't won a playoff game since 2003, losing 16 in a row. But the Astros are a below 500 team in the playoffs. How hard could it be? Kenta Maeda certainly did his part to make it easier. He shut out the Astros for five innings and struck out five batters. The Twins' one to nothing lead was protected going into the ninth. So how do we think this one ends? Did the Twins finally snap their streak, protect a one nothing lead, and honor the work that their ace did for them? Sergio Roma walks in the go-ahead run. Bartolo Colon Jr. grounds into a double play to end game one. Twins lose. Ouch. The next day they get held to one run again and they lose game two and the series. Just like that. <clears throat> Ouch. I mean, let's just check on our friend in Toronto. I mean, things can't possibly be going as bad over there, right? Ryu got the ball for the do or die game two against Tampa Bay and, uh, um, oh, mm, I don't want to do it. Do I have to do another one? Fine, fine. Ouch. And to top it all off, despite shedding pieces from their rotation, the Dodgers finally climbed the mountain in 2020 and won the World Series without Ryu or Maeda. Ouch. And that brings us to now. Now, let's not end the video like that. There are a couple more cool things I can tell you about. The failures of their teams in the postseason should not mar the amazing seasons that Maeda and Ryu both had, with both of them respectively finishing second and third in the AL Cy Young voting. They were beat out by Shane Bieber, who won unanimously, and rightfully so. For Ryu, it was back-to-back -back seasons placing in the top three for Cy Young voting, and for Maeda, it was his first time even sniffing an award like this. Maeda was also top class for some of the MLB's cooler Sabre metrics, like weighted on base value, beating out both Cy Youngs, and being the best pitcher in the American League at yielding soft contact. In a similar vein, Ryu's reinvention of his arsenal also allowed him to be a contact machine. He was top five in hard hit percentage, and led all of MLB's starting pitchers in barrel percentage. <sighs> okay, that's a lot better. Between coming overseas and battling postseason woes and suddenly changing teams and having to change their arsenals and becoming aces of their staffs, it's hard to ignore how similar the careers of Hyunjin Ryu and Kenta Maeda really were. But through making this video, I kind of found out that they're unique in their own different ways and they've become some of my favorite pitchers because of it. And I really do hope that they're able to capture their rings before their career ends. And I think they will. They've already figured out how to combat their lowering velocity in unique and creative ways. I'm really eager to see how they progress in 2021. But that's all I got for you guys today. Stick around for a few quick shout outs. I want to give a quick and deserved shout out to Sadman Baseball. Not only did he create one of the graphics in the beginning for this video, but he also just released one of the best baseball videos of the year from his tour of spring training earlier in the year. Part two is coming out soon, he's already working on it, and I definitely think you guys should check out part one now. Also on that tour was Stark Raving Sports, who just released their 45 minute documentary on the Wilpons ownership of the New York Mets. I'm featured in this video, and I think it's probably my favorite baseball YouTube video that I've ever seen, and this one definitely deserves your attention. 